So I was at a, uh, I was attending a songwriting workshop uh, a number of years ago. I was sitting in the back and I was kind of listening to what was going on. And um, the teacher was talking about how to write a, a big chorus, you know, how to really get your choruses up there and, um, and jump out of the song, you know, don't bore us, where's the chorus, was what he was saying. And I thought it was a pretty interesting topic, so I sat in. And um, he talked about how to, uh, you know, just get your courses up there. Just make them stand out. Just make them stand out. And the student in the back uh, raised his hand. Uh, yeah, I can help you. He said, uh, yeah, but how do, you, um, how do you actually do that? And the teacher said, well, just get them up there. Just make them louder. You know, just make those courses big. Uh, yes, you again? Uh, yeah, yeah, but you, you say make them. But how do you actually do is there something you do to make them bigger? Is there some lyric or harmonic or melodic thing? Oh, you know what? Just believe in yourself. You can do it, man. Can you do it, class? Yeah, you can do it. Make your courses bigger. Now go on and do it. Okay. And I thought to myself, there's so much of that going on in, in songwriting teaching, uh, uh, really teaching the what and not the how. You know, go do this, go do that and uh, you'll have a hit song. But no one, I mean, I shouldn't say no one, but it's, it's rare to find uh, instruction that says how to do it. Um, and so I got to thinking about that a lot. How do you write a big chorus? And that was one of the first workshops that I ever uh, uh, put together and actually kind of got me on the road to teaching songwriting because I realized, yeah, how do we do this stuff? We know what to do, but how do you do it? And ultimately, I believe it's a mystery, but we, boy, we can get pretty close to offering some pretty um, helpful um, hints uh, based on what we've learned. And so how do you write a big chorus? Well, I talked about that before in another video. Uh, uh, you don't just believe in yourself. You save, the root position, you save the root position one chord for the very beginning of the chorus while setting up expectation for it in the sections preceding the chorus. Hmm. Check out that video. It tells you more about it. Or go to my online school of songwriting, uh, stevelesley.com. Uh, uh, you can click on the post, uh, the link in the post if you want to go there. And so, uh, and more, you know, uh, other topics that I've seen uh, that are more about the what than the how uh, are, you know, add more interesting chords. Just go ahead, add more interesting chords to your song. Well, well you know, what chords, where, and how do you learn those chords? Well, I always say get a good teacher get a good guitar instructor, and uh, and I know some. If you'd like to email me or message me or whatever, I can give you some recommendations, but find a good guitar teacher that, what, that will teach you what you want to know uh, as a songwriter. You know, you don't want to learn necessarily how to improvise. You don't want to learn how to read notes necessarily. You want to learn chord progressions, and you want to learn, you know, five different G chords so that you can paint with a, you know, a, a more elaborate palette so get, find a good guitar teacher, you know, or take my subscription model and, and uh, under guitar method and music theory and learn all about this stuff. Well, um, another another uh, what instead of the how that we hear all the time in teaching is be descriptive, you know, um, don't tell, show. Now go on, go do that. Well, how do you do that? You know, well, particulars reveal universals, what Leonard Cohen said. Uh, you don't just say tree, you say sycamore. Um, understatement is a is a great uh, way to um, um, be descriptive and to not uh, uh, tell, uh, or, or yeah, not to tell, but to kind of let the listener in. There's understatement, functional versus decorative metaphors are a big thing. Um, all this you can find at my website at the teaching school. Another one I hear is perfect rhyme is too restrictive. Don't use perfect rhyme, you know, it's, it's too restrictive. And I think, well, that's quite the generalization, isn't it? Because perfect rhyme, uh, is great that pays off the hook, you know. Guess she'd had enough of that lonely stuff. There's nothing like perfect rhyme that just slaps its tail on that on that title on that hook. So perfect rhyme there, pretty cool, pretty important. Um, and if the if the if the character in the song is uh, more of a formal character, then then the formal uh, approach to, with perfect rhyme is 
probably the best idea there. If he's not, then near rhyme would be more closer to the vernacular, wouldn't it? So you want to go there, but it's it's never one or the other for me. It's really a combination of both, perfect and near rhyme. But that's uh, how you do it, as opposed to what you do. You know, go use perfect rhyme or don't use perfect rhyme. Well, why and where? Um, and I love this one, write catchy melodies. <laughs> go on, go write some catchy melodies and you'll have a hit. Well, well, how do you, how do you write catchy melodies? You know, on and on and on and on. So, um, it's easy to, it's easy to say what you guys should be doing. It's, it, it's different. Uh, it's a whole different ball game and how you, how we learn to do it and, and how we can, uh, codify those things, uh, and, and, and share them with, with the students. Um, you know, most songwriters come to songwriting, uh, come to learn songwriting um, after having written songs for, for quite a while, you know, and they want to know how to get better. They kind of know what they need to know, but they want, need, need to know how to do it. Um, usually songwriters have been writing for a while um, b before they start going, you know, I might want to learn a little bit more about this stuff and then kind of get into a program or find a teacher or a mentor or get online or, or attend workshops, whatever it is. Um, and that's where the how comes in. And, and, and at this point, uh, God is in the details. It's that 15 to 20 percent of those better choices that make a song a good song and a good song a potentially great song. And it's not what those things are only, but how do you do those things? Um, it's in, you know, God is in the details. My students can tell you, you know, they've been writing for a long time and they're writing really, really good songs. And boy, you can just pick out a few things that, boy, that make that whole thing unified that really just makes it go boom. Um, very simple kind of things that are that are hard to um, hard to come by at first. You have to be doing this a long time to kind of have a 30,000 degree view of these things and be able to pick out the details. Uh, God is in the details. It's that 15 to 20 percent uh, choices that you can learn. Um, the how and not just the what. It's funny, you know, us, us, us songwriting teachers, you know, uh, Going to workshops, having a mentor, or studying, even studying songwriting in college was not how we learned to write songs. That, for me, my age, that wasn't even available, really. Songwriting was not even a, a really a discipline. Um, we learned to write songs from what we learned from writing songs. Let me say that again. We learned to write songs from what we learned from writing songs. Same as teaching. We teach what we learned from writing songs by paying attention to how we do what we do. Again, there's the how. So uh, if you're not being taught, uh, if you're only being taught what to do and not how to do it, you're probably wasting your time and your money.